Hello and welcome to Daily Current Affairs by Neo AAS. Today is 29th August 2019 and the topic we are going to discuss is Foreign Direct Investment Biometric Seafarer Identify uh, Document that is BSID, Escaricia Coli, then International Coalition for Disaster Re uh, Resilient Infrastructure, Map Aided Program and the previous year question revision series. So coming to the first topic that is a foreign uh, direct investment. So this is a news because the union uh, union government they have announced um, a number of decisions to actually to attract more FDI into the country. So currently the FDI policy says that a single brand retail company with more than around 51 percent of the FDI they need to source 30 percent of its good from within India. So the new decision it will say that the 30% can be calculated over the first 5 years of operation that will be a easing of FDI. So the current FDI policy it will provides for 100% of FDI under the automatic route in the in the manufacturing sector. So there was no provision like that before. Okay so it has now decided to allow around 100% FDA under the automatic uh, route in the contact, uh, sorry, contract manufacturing uh, in India as well. So, the single branded retail companies can now start selling online uh, before setting up a brick and mortar store as long as they set up one with uh, within two years of starting online sales. Okay, so earlier uh, they had to set up a brick and mortar store before selling in online also. Okay, so then changes to the FDI rules for digital and uh, coal media, it include the decision to permit around 26% of FDI with government approval for uploading and uh, streaming news and the current affairs using uh, what the digital media. Okay, so that will be uh, in lines of the print media also. So it has uh, decided to permit around 100% of FDI under automatic rule for uh, route for sale of coal and a, everything related to coal mining activities okay so this would be under the coal mines act 2015 the infrastructure the, the provisions will be changed in the coal mines act of 2015 and the mines and minerals act of 1957 as well okay so what is foreign direct investment that should be discussed no so fda is basically an investment by someone who is not an India, by a non-resident entity, it can be an MNC, it can be a person who can carry out business operations in India. So they will have to manage the investment, they produce goods and services, they employ people and they also market their products. So in FDI, the ownership and the control, control of the firm is with the investor. Okay, and the foreign investor, they usually take a they take a considerable stake or a share from the company and they also influence the management because they are investing so they will influence the, the company management as well okay so the next topic is biometric uh, seafarer identity document that's a bsid so this is a news because uh, india has become the first country in the world to use uh, bsid for uh, because they are capturing facial biometric data of the seafarer Okay, so the new, new facial uh, biometric technology, it will be an improvement over the, the local fring, fingerprint technology or iris based uh, biometric data. So this will be with the modern security features. So it will also make the identification of the seafarer identity document holder, it will be more reliable and transparent and it will also protect their dignity and privacy. So the new card um, is in confirmation um, under the International Labour Organization. Okay. So India has ratified the convention in 2015. What are the major features of BSID is it introduces modern security features. That is one thing and they will embed a biometric chip also. So the security of this card is ensured at various levels through various methods. So at the time of data capturing the live faces cross matched through passport photo using a face matching software. So the card has two optical security features. One is a micro print or the micro test, uh, text and there is a um, unique uh, glock pattern. Okay. 
and the software has been developed for capturing the facial biometrics and its authentication through public key infrastructure and a record of each SID issued will be maintained in the national database. So, there will be an integrated database and related information on SID. Okay, so uh, in India, uh, BSID project have been taken in collaboration with the Center for uh, Development of Advanced Computing that is CDAC. CDAC is placed in Mumbai. So, the government notified the merchant shipping rules in 2016. This particular rule is for the CFRS biometric identification document and uh, nine data collection centers have been set up at uh, uh, Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, uh, Noida, Goa, etc. for uh, collecting data on uh, seafarers ok so the next topic is escherichia coli escherichia coli is a news because uh, <clears throat> there is a study on antibiotic resistance in ganga ok so the project will uh, identify the sources of escherichia coli in ganga so the aim of the research project is to indicate the type of contamination sewage and industrial in the river and how is it a threat to the human health okay because humans are becoming more antibiotic resistance these days so that is again an issue so uh, so we have to identify the the sources of escherichia coli escherichia coli is basically a type of bacteria that uh, that lives in the gut of animals and uh, humans okay so the project is expected uh, to complete in two years it has been undertaken by the institute of uh, motilal nehru institute of technology that is in allahabad then the national environment engineering research institute niri niri is in nagpur and sardar patel institute of science and technology that is in gorakhpur okay and there are many other uh, companies also who are uh, collaborating with these institutes and uh, they will provide the complete genome sequencing services everything related because um, the data they collect should be sequenced should be understood what what is it okay so that is everything done by these institutions so escherichia coli it is a bacterium that is as i told you it is present in the guts of humans and uh, warm-blooded animals uh, most of its strains are not harmful okay or less harmful but some can cause severe foodborne diseases okay so um, shiga to uh, toxin producing e coli it is a bacterium that cause severe foodborne diseases so e coli infection is usually transmitted through contaminated water or food or undercooked meat or raw milk okay so the basic symptoms is like diarrhea uh, cramps then uh, you will have uh, a fever vomiting Okay, so the patient will recover within 10 days in, in a few cases, but some cases will be extreme. You can't predict what will happen. Okay, the next topic is International Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. So, this is a news because the union cabinet uh, chaired by Prime Minister has given approval for establishment of CDRI. Okay, and it will be supported by the Secretariat Office in New Delhi. So, this international coalition, what is it? It is proposed uh, to be launched at United Nations Climate Action Summit in New York. Okay, it will be in uh, September 2019. So, this will be like a platform where the knowledge is generated and exchanged on different aspects of disaster and how to uh, actually mitigate it how to live uh, in a climate resilient infrastructure okay so there are many initiative on different aspects of disaster risk reduction you know from sendai framework so uh, a global coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure is is the need of the day need of the hour so it would address the concerns that are common to both the developing countries and the developed countries small economy and large economy countries at early stages of infrastructure and late stage of in infrastructure, countries that have moderate risk and high risk of disaster. So, everyone will be addressed in a holistic manner. So, few concrete initiative works at intersection of uh, Sentai framework, then sustainable development goals and the climate change adaptation. They will be focusing mainly on infrastructure. Okay. So, what is Sentai framework? Sentai framework was adopted at uh, at the third United Nations Convention on Disaster Risk Reduction, it happened in Japan. Sendai is a place in Japan. So, it, this framework is 15 year voluntary non-binding agreement. So, they recognize that the state has a primary role to mitigate 
disaster risk or to reduce the disaster risk. So, the present framework they apply to the risk of small scale and large scale or frequent or infrequent every disaster, everything uh, related to man-made or natural hazards as well as related to environmental, technological, biological hazards. Everything is covered under Sendai framework and it aims to achieve a substantial reduction of disaster risk. Okay, and they'll take account the loss of life, the loss of property, health, the end, uh, the pandemics coming after it, everything will be covered in Sendai framework. Okay, so the next topic is map aided program. We are continuing with the tiger reserves in Tamil Nadu. So today we have Satyamangalam tiger reserve. So this is also a wildlife sanctuary and it is in uh, the, the western gut region. It's in Erod district of Tamil Nadu. So this was first declared as uh, wildlife sanctuary in 2008 and in 2011 it it was uh, renamed as uh, in sorry in 2013 it was called as a tiger reserve it is a fourth tiger reserve in the state and uh, this is actually a wildlife corridor in the nilgiri biosphere reserve it is a corridor between the western guts and the eastern guts so there is a link between the nearby wildlife sanctuaries as, as well there is bili rangana uh, Swami Temple uh, Wildlife Sanctuary in Bengaluru, then you have, uh, sorry, not in Bengaluru, in Karnataka, then you have uh, Sigur uh, Plateau nearby, then you have Mudumalai National Park and Bandipur National Park again in the Karnataka. So, everything is a belt. It is a belt or, or a corridor of uh, uh, the animal movement. Okay, so Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve is a part of it. Tiger moves from one forest to another forest. That is why it is called as a corridor. I can give you a picture but this is not a very good picture. I have marked it with the, the red pen also. Uh, you can actually see the corridor. It is a green. Every green color in the, in the picture is a corridor. Okay. And coming to the, the previous year question revision series. Yesterday's question was about chlorofluorocarbon. Um, where are they used? The, the answer is uh, option B, 4 only. Okay. And for today's question, it is consider the following agricultural practices, condor bunting, relay cropping, zero tillage. So, in the context of global climate change, which of the following can help in carbon sequestration or so storage in soil? So, answer this in today's uh, comment session. Okay. So, that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. Study hard. Thank you so much. Good night.